Today is the 29th of March 2021, the day that the British government has deemed it appropriate for us to have the freedom to not stay at home if we don't want to. So we are free to travel. From today onwards, we're allowed to ride again, basically. I've just not been riding. That's why all my videos have been from the garage. I've just not ridden. So this is a big day. <laughs> Love it. And at the weekend, I've organized to go out on the dirt bike as well. So this week could involve quite a lot of motorcycling. Oh, bliss. Bliss. And the sun's had the decency to come out, and according to the bike, it's 15 and a half degrees. That's veritable midsummer weather in England. Feels like the world's coming back to life again a little bit in England at the moment. Oh, I have missed this. I am hoping to get a lot of riding in this year. So, I've got a question for you. Have you seen the drawings for the new Triumph TE1, the first Triumph electric bike. It was in MCN last week and I've watched a few YouTube videos on it and I have to say, I think probably for, probably for the first time with any real intent, I did think to myself, I could bloody go for one of them. It's a lovely looking bike, it just looks like a speed triple. And the figures are good. The figures are good. 120 mile range. 20 minute recharge up to 80%. 20 minutes. I mean, that's a cup of coffee time. So you get a bike that looks like a proper bike. 120 mile range, which to be perfectly honest with you, Yes, I do do journeys of more than 120 miles, but I would say 95% of my journeys are less than 120 miles. And if you can charge to 80% in 20 minutes, that makes it a viable bike. That actually makes it a viable bike. If they get the pricing right on that, and I'm thinking in my mind, 15 grand, maybe 16 grand, and I know that's a lot less than the other electric bikes that are out there but if Triumph really want to sell that bike I reckon that could be the bike that is the game changer for electric bikes if they make that an affordable bike I mean I know 15 16 grand is still a lot of money but it's not 25 30 grand it's it's a bike that you could could consider that up against other bikes, you know, petrol bikes. I reckon that could be a game changer. In fact, I will say this now. If they get the pricing right on that, I'll buy one. It won't be my only bike, but I would definitely put one of those in my garage. What a fantastic looking machine. And I think it was something like 100, uh, equivalent of 157 horsepower, something like that. And oodles and oodles of torque. What do you think of it? Let me know what you think of the uh, Triumph TE1 in the comments section. Is it just me that's getting excited about it? I mean, am I excited about an electric bike? I think I am. We've got to accept it's the future. 10 years from now, we'll all be riding them. The only thing I can't decide to do on this bike with regard to the mods is anything to the suspension I'm in two minds on whether to upgrade and I have been looking at possible upgrades there, there's some um, K-Tech do some nice suspension upgrade innards for the forks new, new springs cartridges and what have you and uh, all adjustable and new shock for the back all adjustable it's not cheap but it's it, it's not beyond the realms of possibility either 
or I've noticed that WP also do some suspension upgrades similar sort of thing adjustable innards for the forks so you keep keep the forks but just change the the in, insides yeah the wavy disc that I've got the Galfa wavy discs they are purported to increase your braking by 25% which that sounds pretty good to me I bought the back disc as well just basically because I want them to look the same I know that you know you're never gonna get a massive amount of braking from the back although I do use my back brake all the time but um, I just want to as I've said a few times, all the mods I've done to this bike are pretty much just a vanity project because the performance of it is fantastic anyway. Although I must admit, I do want to improve the um, uh, the front brakes. That's one thing that the bike, in my opinion, don't get me wrong, the brakes are fine, they're good. But when I bought my Thruxton, which has got the Brembo's on it, and I felt the brakes on that, I thought, bloody hell these could be improved and having you know riding both bikes on different days I, I just felt like the brakes were lacking a bit and um, since the discs have started warping slightly it's a bit of a no-brainer for me to try and upgrade the brakes anyway that's that brakes are being upgraded might even do it this evening when I get back yeah baby the sun's out the Moto GP is on World Superbike and British Superbike is going to be starting soon. TT's cancelled, that's unfortunate. I think there might still be some racing at Scarborough. So I'm going to see if I can get to that. We're allowed to ride again. I'm going out on the dirt bike. I'm booked in for a few things later this year. I'm hoping to go camping soon. Wee Live, all live, all live. It's coming back. Yeah, baby, and, and, lest we forget, there is still a 1,000 subscriber giveaway on this channel, and if I'm not mistaken, we are getting rather close to that. When I, when I was set this challenge by my son, I had just over 100 subscribers, that was about a year ago, and what a year. But, the subscriber count has still been steadily, slowly creeping up. And I believe earlier today it was on 888. So, pushing the 900. And that puts us 100 away from the 1000 subscriber giveaway competition for the Krieger US 30 dry pack bag which I'm going to hand deliver my motorbike probably this motorbike to whoever wins it providing they live somewhere in Europe anywhere in the UK or Europe I'll deliver it in person if you live further afield and you win you still get the bag but I'll have to deliver it. 10,000 subscriber giveaway. I might do worldwide. Go on, mate. Quite windy. <laughs> oh, comes to soak when you're excited, bloody riding on a dual carriageway. Tell you what. I'd be excited riding anywhere at the moment. This is bliss. Oh, God. The lockdown's been quite hard, hasn't it? Not, I mean, in some ways it hasn't, but in other ways, just having your freedom restricted. Like, we're not, we're not born to live like that. It's just been weird. Right, coming off here, what does it say? 5.5 miles, 10 minutes. Two minute miles? <laughs> I think not. I think tomorrow I might go out for a ride on the Triumph. Well, I started this video on Monday. It's Wednesday now because 
when I got back on Monday, half the footage was fine, and the other half of it, some of it had sound but no images, some of it had images but no sound, but anyway, equally unusable. So I thought I'd just finish the video off on a different day. And today, it is the turn of the lovely Camille. Oh yeah, baby. Woohoo! <laughs> and she's running like a dream. Running like a dream. What a beautiful bike this is. This is just next level. Woohoo! I love it! I would change nothing about this bike. I'm spending a fair bit of money modifying the Duke 790 and I love the Duke 790. I've always loved that bike. But this bike, I don't want to spend a penny on it and modifying it because it's perfect as it is. Perfect! This is where this bike belongs. Twisty English country lanes. Perfect. I was watching a Gorilla Biker video this morning and at the end of the video on his outro crew bit he basically said anybody fancy a spin out in Ireland or Scotland or anywhere I think were his exact words and you know what that just tickled my fancy oh you stupid pheasant oof is it how the hell did that pheasant not get killed so anyway I commented I left him a comment saying uh, yep I'm up for a spin so as soon as we're able to travel can't go to Scotland at the moment Scotland's closed but I think it might be opening up in a couple of weeks and I'll have to find out what the score is on uh, traveling to Ireland but as soon as I can then I'm gonna get in touch with him and say get the kettle on mate make sure you've got fuel in your bike I'm coming over I'm gonna go for a ride and there's another pheasant that's trying to commit suicide they're the stupidest birds in the world most birds and small animals when the car comes close to them they run in the opposite direction pheasants they sort of stand there looking at you going uh, 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 and then they think oh fuck it and they run at the bloody vehicle why? Why did God make them so stupid? Chickens are stupid as well, incidentally. I've got a friend who, she's been vegetarian pretty much all of her life, but she eats chicken. And when we asked her why she eats chicken, she said, well, chickens are stupid. Fair enough. That's not why I eat chicken, it just tastes good, but that's why she eats it. Another pheasant. What are you going to do, pheasant? You're going to run at me, aren't you? Yeah, fucking stupid birds. <laughs> I have hit a couple of, on the car window before. Oh my God, I might hit, and I'll make a bang. I haven't broken a window, but it's definitely, definitely makes you jump. There's another one. Loads of them out at the moment. I'm not a pheasant plucker, I'm a pheasant plucker's son. I'm only plucking pheasants till the pheasant plucker comes. Clutchless up shifts on the Thruxton. I haven't got a quick shifter, but just a little bit of a blip. So smooth. Gearbox on this bike is like Mantequilla. Boom. <laughs> Love it. I'm going to go this way because I'm going to tell you something. This is one of my favourite roads. Blip! Bang! Blip! Bang! Blip! Bang! <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for joining me on this ride. I hope you've enjoyed it even a fraction as much as I have. If you haven't already subscribed, then consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when I do any other videos. Some from the garage, 
some from events, and some like this one from the bike. Yeah, baby! Woohoo! See you in the next video. Bye! Oops, I didn't realize I was doing quite that speed.